Welcome to today's uh, final webinar of our short or mini series um, Ravenna webinars. Today's topic will be focusing on remote production. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into the topic. Um, so here's just a quick overview again. We will have Nicholas Sturmel from Merging Technologies. He will be presenting uh, on the recently published uh, AES report, which um, uh, is a very, very interesting um, report on how to deploy AES67 beyond the local area network, which is the original uh, network infrastructure uh, for AES67. So we have collected um, uh, a number of uh, problems which you might encounter, and we also will have provided um, potential solutions and addressed some additional topics of interest when it comes to deploying AES67 or Ravenna uh, networks across the wide area network environment. Then uh, we'll have Luca Giaroli from Direct Out. Um, he will take the practical part um, of this um, webinar. He will present uh, um, yet another example on how AES67 with the help uh, of Ravenna and, and wide area network provider uh, it has been implemented uh, in a practical environment. And at the end, uh, we'll definitely uh, we'll try to answer all your questions. So again, use the Q&A function throughout the webinar. We're collecting all uh, topics of interest, of course. All right, so my first guest today will be Nicholas Sturmel from Merging Technologies. Um, well, Merging Technologies basically, hello, Nicholas, welcome. Uh, Merging Technologies, basically, I don't have to introduce anymore. Um, they are designer of, of the finest um, uh, analog to digital and analog to uh, network gear, um, developer of the Paramix uh, digital audio workstation, and they are in business for more than 30 years now. So that's uh, Merging um, Technologies. And Niklas uh, is working for quite some time for Merging now, and he really is an expert in everything. Uh, audio network, in particular AES67. So he has, um, he was the uh, well, how do you call it, the group leader, the editor um, of this um, recently published uh, AES report, which has this weird uh, number. What was the number again? I even forgot the number, but uh, Nicholas will tell you again. And that is uh, available um, on the AES uh, website for download. So Nicholas, I guess. Uh, no further words uh, to say to introduce you. Basically, everyone knows you anyway. <laughs> so I would say um, take it from there and I'll pass the uh, presentation over uh, to you now. So hello, everyone. Um, let's dive in. Uh, R20-2021 is about AS67 beyond the RAN, uh, like Andreas told us. Uh, the RAN is the classical way of doing audio networking since the early days of audio networking, uh, for instance, with uh, ETS sound. And of course, because of uh, user needs, customer needs, and uh, the, uh, this little crisis that is never ending in the world, uh, questions about putting AS67 beyond of the RAN, meaning the one, the wider RAN network uh, arose. So <clears throat> this is the typical uh, AES67 setup. You have a local RAN network. So this is this green box. And uh, sometimes you are brave enough to connect directly your Ravenna setup to your gateway, maybe uh, your uh, ISP box or your router, etc. And if you do that, then this gives you the ability to actually pass Ravenna uh, through the internet or any other kind of network to other RANs, for instance, here with RAN B, or sometimes single endpoints or even virtual endpoints. Uh, so this would be, for instance, via the internet, you would uh, go to a data center and uh, do mixing or the, on the, in a data center or maybe uh, recording or contribution, etc. You can have an endpoint and it's generally everything goes through a gateway. A gateway being the door that you have to go through uh, from one run to another. 
uh, and mainly from one RAN to a one, a wide array network. Uh, okay, so basically you have three types at least of wide array networking. You have the one you own. Uh, basically, you are great infrastructure. You are, for instance, uh, you are the discovery channel, which are, which is owning your sport, or you are NEP. And uh, those have uh, enough money that they can have their own network on some part of the world. And of course, they have a dedicated team for that. So it's easy to, it's, it's not that easy, but at least you have people that you can uh, that that you can uh, count on to administrate your network, or you can borrow the the wider array network. So basically, you go to a company that is specialized in uh, providing network services, and you say, okay, I want to put AS67 on this network. I need this level of service, and you will sign a SLA, a service level level agreement. They can be in terms of uh, bandwidth, in terms of latency, in terms of even the percentage of expected packet loss. Um, and of course, the third one is the internet. Uh, then you are on your own because you, there's so many people and you are on the internet than basically your own. Uh, but the, the, this document, the, the R20 uh, AS67 document was aiming at those three kind of wide area network uh, because the internet you will use the internet for instance when connecting to a service in a data center okay so compared to the lan to the local area network uh, the one is is really different first in terms of distances so in a lan you have rarely more than one or two kilometers uh, between devices in the one you can have hundreds or thousands of kilometers up to the point that uh, in the run you do not have to take transmission time into account so the transmission from point a to point b um, on the wire uh, but on one you have to uh, typically on a fiber the traveling speed is two thirds of the speed of light meaning that you would need uh, basically five milliseconds something like that to go one ki one thousand kilometers and of course five milliseconds is much more than the average latency you expect for a ravina setup so really so it adds up time that you have to take into account Another difference is that on, on the LAN, you have your private network and you can control the network. You can control who is connecting to the network. You can control what is passing on the network. Whereas on the wide array network, you often lease the public, lease or use a public network. Uh, this means that you will have limitations in terms of bandwidth or protocols that you can use. Um, while AS67 and ST2021-1030, uh, for this matter, was built with LAN constraints in mind, uh, the, the whole AS67 work was already inheriting from what has been done with ASIP. Um, on DBU, ASIP being audio contribution over IP, and ASIP is used a lot to do contribution uh, in, in radio, uh, mainly for long distances and on one or on the on the uh, internet. And of course, when we talk about streaming and streaming over the internet, it is not the distribution of content; it is about content distribution. So while streaming is often um, the streaming of pre-produced content, so the, the, the latency is not really important, or even with web, web radios where you have real-time content, but with high latency, uh, from five to even 30 or 60 seconds of latency. Here, we are trying to go um, real-time in terms of real-time communication. So having low latency, low enough to allow music playing or having a conversation. Uh, depending on what the network can offer us, of course. So 
why would I need uh, performance audio on a one? Okay, so of course, because of COVID, because of COVID, people were working from home, from home and those people were including technicians and uh, engineers working in broadcast and music industry. And uh, there you have the main need right now for uh, COVID. And those use cases are so high quality contribution. Uh, while ACIP is using mostly, it can use PCM, but it is mostly using compressed uh, encoders uh, such as AAC or MPEG. Uh, you would want to do high quality contributions and then you may want to go uh, the AA67 road. Uh, you would want to go to, go to do live concert uh, with musicians apart from one another, but we will have a presentation dedicated for that. Uh, in a couple of in some minutes now you want to do monitoring uh, so monitoring from afar uh, voiceover in multiple languages this is uh, one use case that uh, we had with your sports um, or maybe you just want to do processing in the cloud uh, which is doing your sport too so um, you want to gather all your processing or your processing devices on at one place in order to share the resources and save on money. Um, there are here three properties that we are that we will try to minimize and to optimize uh, the latency, of course, and as seen before, it can be uh, really. It will be higher uh, on the one, so we will have to take care of that. The quality, uh, the quality in terms of the audio quality, but also the quality of the connection uh, in terms of losing packets and the easiness of the connectivity. And of course, uh, this is AES67, but this is Ravenna 2, and we want to be able to do the connection as easy as possible. And of course, uh, this is a topic that I've been presenting for a while now, but in 2022, we expect even more one use for AD67. So we, we have Olympics, we have World Cup, and we have this wonderful sitcom that is COVID, which is apparently uh, still running for season three. So we will see where it ends. I'm really looking forward for the last episode of this sitcom. Uh, so ASR 2021, um, it was, so the, the story was we have, we had COVID, okay, we want to work on the one and we want to uh, reply to, the, to those questions, uh, to give answers to what can I do with my AS67 devices. So I have already AS67 devices, can I connect them uh, through a one? Uh, what can I add to my network to strengthen the connection? So, ah, oh, it seems that on the one I'm losing packets. What can I do to avoid losing packets? And what should manufacturers add to the equipments? So, AA67 being a standard, we can also uh, provide uh, requirements or uh, suggest manufacturers to uh, modify their equipments. And while this was not the main goal of this report, it laid the foundation probably for a subsequent version of this AS67 standard. The report was happily published December 25th of this year. And thanks for the lot of contribution and work of the, of the whole team. Uh, we had academics, we, have we had manufacturers, system integrators and users that shared uh, their their point of view, their perspective, their, their return of uh, uh, their feedback, basically, on um, on what they use, they have what use they have on the one right now, uh, uh, and their difficulties and uh, the imprecisions that we should need to clear out uh, in this document. It took us 15 months and approximately 60 calls. A lot of discussion and uh, definition of what best practices are or could be. And best practice is really the interesting um, keyword here because the whole, do the whole document is 
not giving requirements as per se, but trying to guide the user into properly using uh, what is at hand uh, in, the, in the proper way that is the most effective and uh, respectful of all the IT best practices that we are trying to adopt in the media networking world. But uh, do I really need uh, Ravenna YS67? Um, most of the time, I, I will not. Most of the time, we, we, you will not need uh, AS67 uh, on, on a one. But uh, if you want to do precision timing, if you want to do PCM quality and at merging, since we do very, very high sampling rates, we have customers that really want uh, the stream to go untouched from one site to another at uh, sampling rates as high as 384 kilohertz. Uh, or if you want low latency uh, for real-time operations, uh, this could be um, use cases to go AES67. And use case is also a, an important word here because uh, the, the solution will always depend on specifics uh, of your project. So the workflow, uh, the way you can compensate for latency, so being cascading, cascading of the of the different contributors or having one uh, lead track for instance in the case of, midi, of musicians uh, playing together uh, do i need precise, precise timing or not and this can be useful when you do um voice over over a, a video feed you want to control the time in order to, for the voice over to not come half a second later uh, are the timestamps enough? In my RTP stream, I have the start, the timestamps, but do I need PTP as well, or can I use only the timestamp? And uh, do I need to share everything from site A to B? So we have a number of problems with AS67, of course. Uh, the first one being the speed of flight, as I said before. Uh, it, it's important to realize that even with infinite bandwidth latency, latency ha we have to be considered um, because light travel fast, but not that fast when you are using uh, high distances. And for instance, from here in Grenoble, when I have my my home, when I where I have my home office to Lausanne merging headquarters. Only two, two, only 200 kilometers, but uh, the network is not in a straight line. We are passing a lot of uh, routers and other IT hardware, hardware uh, giving the minimum run to run time of 16 milliseconds. And it, can, it could go here in this test uh, that lasted uh, approximately four minutes and a half. Uh, it went as high as 42 milliseconds. So in the end, while on the run, you will, you just needed to take PDV into account, the packet elevation. Uh, in a on the one, you need to take this URF delay, which will produce a minimum packet delay that the device can compensate for, or you just need to have a greater buffer um, on your AS67 receiver. And for last year uh, tests with Ravenna that we did, it was basically the way uh, I went. And here, uh, while we had this test of uh, the stream coming back and forth from a cloud server, I had the receiver at 333 milliseconds of buffer, which allowed us to receive the stream properly. Then of course you have timing and sync because you want to go to do PTP, but you cannot do PTP uh, as you want. Uh, you saw probably the presentation of last week. If not, uh, I recommend you have a look at it on the internet. Basically, uh, the 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 go-to uh, setup is to have one grandmaster on each site and all those grandmasters synchronized uh, with GPS. But sometimes you cannot get Either you are you have a cheap project and you cannot get as much PTP grandmasters as you would wish to, or you are in a difficult 
location and you cannot get proper sync with GPS. Uh, in all those cases, you might need to use other types of clocks and uh, network time protocol NTP can be good enough if you are not chasing a very low latency or passing uh, PDP over the one and then you need a very good filter, but it's doable too, um, as you saw last week. Okay, and then there's a problem is in AES67 that we had to take into account. Of course, the PTP masters are, are not the same. Uh, so we have to use the traceable key keyword to signal the receiver that, okay, trust the PTP master, uh, do not care that much on its ID. I, as a user or as the administrator of the network, I am taking care that it is properly configured. And then you have the last problem, which is stream reliability. You can have a perfect clock and you can have really low latency, but since you are using and most likely releasing an, a network and sharing it with other uh, users, you will lose packets. And while ST2110 was uh, uh, hosting this and used the ST2022-7, a uh, standard uh, meaning multipass redundancy or SPS for, for stream protection switching, AS67 was not providing any answer to that problem. And uh, this is because we have a lot of different methods to do stream reliability depending on the use case and the expectation in terms of performances. You can do FCC, which is partial redundant data sent, sent with the stream. Uh, in this way, you uh, basically can um, send small pieces of data that will allow you to correct one or two packet cost. You can do SRT or RIST, uh, which have a way that the receiver can ask for a missing packet to the sender again. So this requires two or three round trip latency. So this is the technique that is the most efficient in terms of bandwidth, but not in terms of latency. And the best techniques in terms of latency is 2022-7, so multiple streams. But of course, in this, you are using a higher bandwidth and you have to have two different passes. Most of the time, uh, users use a gateway that is provided by a third party company, or they can use also a free software that does the gateway for them. And for SRT, for instance, uh, you can write a simple gateway with SRT and uh, use that. So the practical proof of concept uh, was a presentation, a Ravenna presentation uh, that was last year we had a live, a live demonstration of uh, this st these streams going uh, through multiple data center uh, with ross uh, and it was working very well i uh, suggest that you look at this presentation if you have not and of course we can do we can do more uh, we could talk about that for hours. Uh, the best way is to read the document. So AIA67-R20-2021 uh, to get the full story on the document. But the conclusion is that AIA67 is based on IT standards. And this allows it to go over the internet without any problem, uh, fundamental problem. RTP, AES67 is, is using a RTP, which is widely used over the internet and most likely used right now while looking at this uh, presentation and does not require any, sin, the, any specific transport equipment uh, as opposed to, uh, for instance, um, uh, AGB. Uh, the only problem being PTP that is not designed for one, but and uh, the use of multicast that should be avoided uh, over by the way. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Niklas, for this highly condensed presentation. I've seen that before, but uh, 
uh, there it uh, they had uh, about 45 minutes time of course um, that's more time to dig into the details um, but uh, this was a very very nice um, summary of what uh, has been achieved within the uh, isr 20 work all right um, so back to the general flow of the presentation next up uh, will be luca giaoli luca um welcome i uh, hope you are on yes luca is online here we go hello luca hello uh, very glad to have you here as well and um, luca is uh, working for direct out uh, direct out is a german-based company um, located in the middle of Germany, and they are specialized in um, in signal converters, um, uh, mainly uh, in the domain of MADI and networking, of course. Um, so they have very, very nice and very powerful equipment um, which converts anything analog digital into Ravenna AS67 and uh, 702110. And Luca Giorgi is product manager with Direct Out, and he's mainly responsible for some of the uh, very, very interesting projects uh, they have been setting up uh, in the past uh, month or in the past year, actually, uh, on a particular wide area network infrastructures. And before I um, uh, try to uh, cap <laughs> Luca's presentation, I'll pass it over to you, Luca. And uh, we are very excited to see what the newest um, projects have been from direct out in the area of AS67 over wide area networks. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen. Yes, we are. Perfect. So I think that now is the right time for me to deep uh, uh, enter the details of a practical uh, um, explanation, a practical example of what uh, Nicolas introduced you in general. Um, and the best occasion is to describe you what really happened last uh, June when together with an Italian uh, radio broadcaster, uh, which is uh, Radio Monte Carlo, which is part of the Mediaset group, which is the biggest uh, private network for radio and TV in Italy. They, 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 they've been uh, since ages the official radio of uh, um, a jazz festival, which is happening in the middle of Italy in Umbria. Umbria is the central region of Italy, which is the only one which is not touched by the sea. So it's the real, they, they call it the green heart of Italy. And that's interesting because the main station of the radio is based in Milan, where they have the transmission uh, things and all the studios and all the machineries and stuff like that. So they need to, to they need it as, as every year they do, um, recreate a small studio, a small environment, a small, a small radio, studio booth or whatever in a remote location just for a temporary um, uh, period so 15 days or something like that just the duration of the festival and uh, the peculiar situation is that during the day the radio is just transmitting and broadcasting the normal program but from time to time artists involved in that festival just after the the show or just before the performance they are invited in the studio and they are interviewed or sometimes they are also giving some uh, live examples using keyboards and guitars and, and microphones in that little studio. So in the previous years, uh, the radio had to build a complete remote production, bringing their uh, you know, proper console, uh, codecs uh, and transmission things and blah, blah, blah. Since we introduced a vivid solution, which is the combination of uh, uh, direct out hardware, Ravenna stacks, and the Vivivaldi solution. Vivivaldi is an IT company uh, based in Italy, which are specialized in VPN solution and stuff like that. And Vivivaldi is providing um, a very nice packet together with us because we could think about Vivivaldi as our local uh, area network because the magic between our local area network and the next local area network somewhere else in the world no matter what is the distance is completely managed by Vivivaldi so you don't need to be an IT expert to make use of whatever Nicolas told you uh, generally speaking or in theory and this is the biggest approach so basically in Perugia which is in the middle of Italy which is 
by memory something like 500 kilometers away from Milan minimum maybe more maybe 800 or 700 for sure more in terms of fiber they they simply decided to use a couple of prodigy MPs one in Milan and one in Perugia and by means of the VPN granted by Vivivaldi they had just one sound engineer in Perugia during the the the, 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 the two weeks of the radio production from Perugia and from Perugia, that sound engineer could move parameters either locally, where he had local microphone, and or remote. So whatever has been played out from Milan has been mixed in terms of control from Perugia and together mixed as a final solution for the, for the, the, the production of those two weeks of uh, programs. So basically in Milan, we had the Prodigy MP, which was connected to the local resources, the main radio station. In Perugia, we had another Prodigy MP connected with the, the small studio built in inside of the same uh, room. We had all the monitoring feed for the local sound engineer, the guest and the performers, and a virtual console. That, that is a, a, an image, an icon of a proper console, but actually the console is actually made by the Prodigy MP and just an hardware controller just to move some physical faders. Public internet was the means of connection between the two places. They had two different providers just for redundancy purposes. And connecting through a bunch of Vivivaldi uh, equipment, the Vivivaldi, I mean, here we call it we call it VPN router. It's more than a router. It's a router, it's a firewall, it's an SRT encoder and decoder or standard transmitter. It's just a unique solution for easy remote production over internet. And as Nicholas reminded you, we needed to be locked on a, a, a PTP Grandmaster GPS referenced. So we had a small uh, Raspberry Pi receiving the satellite information and converted it to it, a, a PTP and then locally distributed for the devices which were equipped with Ravenna interfaces. So inside of the Prodigy MP, we had a Ravenna card, both sides, and a Dante card, both sides, to interconnect locally, connect devices, and MADI and microphone and whatever is available through a Prodigy MP. That is the idea. So very simple, two normal Prodigy MP, two, two VPN routers from Vivivaldi, an internet connection, and two GPS reference local uh, PTP Grandmaster. And Globcon is the software which is gluing everything. So having Globcon connected to both the Prodigy MP, thanks to the VPN connection, the local sound engineer could control as if they were in the same room, any of the parameters in both Prodigy MPs, controlling levels, mixing, cross points, EQ, dynamics, and whatever, no matter where the DSP was happening. And this is the core idea of the remote production. Then, of course, via um, um, Ravenna, both with low latency, so standard Ravenna UDP packets, no retransmission, uh, we could transmit the bidirectional intercom and monitoring uh, signals in order to keep the overall latency as short as possible. And, of course, we could transport the mix in Perugia of whatever have been the sources locally mixed, such as the microphones of the performance, the comments and the guests and stuff like that, in SRT coded by the Vivivaldi routers, making use of a cloud-based and receive the uh, uncompromised and reliable uh, SRT version, which is then converted to normal standard UDP Ravenna from the Vivivaldi, before reaching the final destination of the Prodigy MP in Milan. Then in Prodigy MP in Milan, both the locally generated audio from the playout for the standard production, the standard show of the day, plus their live mixed material from Perugia were mixed in this uh, Prodigy MP and then transmitted to the world towards the radio transmitters. This is the picture of the, um, the booth or the temporary studio that uh, Mediaset built in uh, Perugia. As you can see, Globcon, which is running in a, in a PC here, is controlling two, um, you can see two, two Prodigy MPs here. Th this one is the one in Perugia, this one is the one in, uh, in Milan. 
And since you could map any of those virtual faders, no matter if the faders are moving something in Perugia or in Milan, in this hardware controller, the sound engineer here could have the control, just the control of the levels produced in Milan, not even reaching Perugia, but going straight to here, but controlled in terms of level from Perugia, plus the local mix produced in Perugia, where the, uh, you know, the sound engineer, here, the technician, was just deciding the levels and stuff like that. Thanks to the um, um, you know, fact that the VPN is also granting any kind of computer connection between Milan and Perugia, the sound engineer had full control with this little uh, you know, uh, keyboard, specialized keyboard and the software of the uh, Xenon playout, which is the main uh, you know, software for the radio uh, you know, to, to, in order to have all the songs and the advertisements and the jingles and blah, blah, blah. And the guy were, was, you know, the guy, this, this guy was working as if he was in Milan in terms of controlling the devices in Milan, thanks to the fact that the computer was connected via VPN to Milan and the Globcon software was controlling both the Prodigy MP in Milan and the Prodigy MP in Perugia. This is the example of the uh, little studio that they set up for the uh, you know live performance of guests, uh, you know the artists which were stopping by before or after the performer in the main stage of the of the festival, and during the interview or after or before they they may may they might have offered some live gig with a normal keyboard, or microphones, guitar, trumpets, and stuff like that. So they had to set up a complete a small radio booth and studio in Perugia, but instead of using a complicated or a big or heavy or expensive console, they could have done that with just a Prodigy MP, which is a two rack unit space device, which is offering DSP capabilities and Ravenna and Dante and Madi and anything you needed. So they, they could host two microphones for host and guest plus the engineer, keyboards left and right, guitar, microphone guest, all the several local feeds for the local monitoring of the guest, of the guests, the engineer and the artist, feeding a PA which was also broadcasting the result outside of the road with an active speaker. They had the PC controlling Globcon and also the remote Xenon which is the, the main play out, which was in Milan, and a MIDI controller just to have a tactile control of few but important faders for the sound engineer, which was mixing up everything in Perugia, even if he was mixing some of the sources really created in Perugia and sent back to Milan via SRT and then mixed together with the local play out, which was generated by the local thing. This is the generic uh, schematic of the of the connection. A little bit more in detail, you can see here in black, the local input and local output in Umbria Jazz in Perugia in the remote location, we had to connect straight to the microphone preamplifier of the Prodigy MP, the several microphones, keyboards and FX returns and whatever. Then we had in green, the Ravenna transmitted signals from Milan, some of them were straight UDP standard Ravenna, very low latency, virtual zero latency. Some of them were via SRT encoding and decoding, or let's say SRT transmission and receiving, thanks to the Vivivaldi SRT cloud. And then of course the output where the several headphones that for the several uh, people in, inside of the studio, the PA, the FX send, and just three signals, one stereo pair and one mono pair, back to Milan where the total amount of sound produced in Perugia was mixed down by the Prodigy and sent back to Milan via SRT, plus a virtual zero latency, so normal UDP Ravenna, standard Ravenna stream, back to uh, Milan for the intercom communication uh, happening back and forth Milan and Perugia. This is the twin device in, uh, in Milan where in red, you can see the Dante connected devices they have already fixed. 
and uh, always present in the in the Milan environment. So there's several different sends of the playout, send A and B, and the card wall, the browser, E minus, mix minus from Milan uh, so sent back to Perugia. Why a mix minus? In case during the show, during the day, there would have been a telephone call. The telephone call would have been managed by Milan. So Milan was receiving a telephone call and sent back the mix minus of that telephone call towards Perugia where people in Perugia could listen to the telephone call and talk back to the guy which was sent by the intercom back to Milan and managed by the uh, Mandozzi matrix, which was uh, fixed and just fixed in, in stuff and the intercom signal. Then, of course, you receive from Perugia the uh, equivalent SRT decoded signals in order to bring everything inside of the MP. Why sending back everything inside of the MP? Why if they could have the possibility to mix those signals a different way? Because if you had a Prodigy MP creating the global mix to be broadcasted on air, thanks to the fact that those two Prodigy MPs are controlled by the same Globcon instance, if we go back here, the guy here had few faders controlling the playout in Milan, the other faders controlling the playout in Perugia, and the global mix of remote produced mix plus the originally Milan mixed were then mixed globally in Milan in order to be ready to broadcast the entire thing live. In Milan, they had the possibility to have um, Dante output to feed the uh, voice left and right and the music for the Xenon, the intercom, which is which is going back to Perugia, and of course produce the feeds, Ravenna feeds, zero latency, virtual zero latency, for monitoring purpose for the engineer. So the engineer in Perugia, in order to decide which would have been the next uh, song or something like that, had the possibility to solo individually the several feeds of the playout, and therefore we need discrete sense of those zero latency feeds in order to provide the solo functionalities to the engineers, which was mixing up everything and deciding the final mix for the broadcast solution. That is the um, schematic of all the connections in detail. I uh, think that we still have five minutes, probably not more than that. So we, we don't have that much time to to, do, to go deep inside the connection. But I think it's important to have a look at this. We, this is the internal connection of the Prodigy MP in Perugia, which is the core of the remote production. So in green, you have the zero latency feeds from Milan, which is feeding the main matrix mixer, which was creating the feeds for the local uh, listening. Uh, so. Uh, the sound engineer and the several um, hosts and guests. Then you have the SRT version of the things that you didn't want to lose a packet about. So the Xenon, Xenon mix left and right, the mix minus, and the FM. We were already we we were also receiving the global FM transmission. FM transmission means what has been sent to the FM transmission in order to have a feedback for the sound engineer and having the possibility to listen what was the real copy of the signal sent to the transmission uh, bridges or uh, antennas and whatever. Because in this way, the engineer had the possibility to listen to the final result, including the open processing, which is added on top of the normal mix uh, in Milan. So. Then we added the local, uh, you know, feeds, microphone and effects, uh, send and, re uh, and uh, return the delay for the little live stage that I had there. Then the Perugia mix using one of the metrics mixes inside of the Prodigy MP, which was creating the mix of just the locally produced mix. So the several microphones for the guests, the keyboard, the direct out box, the direct out input box for the guitar the reverb return and echo reverb. And that Perugia mix left and right was the one sent off the Ravenna transmitter back to Milan. All the others were local outputs. 
that is the uh, example of the schematic of a, a real uh, remote production, which is a very nice example of what Nicholas uh, told you. Despite the fact that Ravenna have been des designed and you know uh, thought about uh, a LAN, a local area network, if you have the possibility to have uh, uh, something which is connecting one, two, or three, or four, and generally speaking, connection or places making use of WAN or internet in this case, you definitely have all the advantages of having the possibility to have a very, very low latency, the minimum one you can get from two different positions. And you don't give up in terms of reliability because if you can play with a little bit higher latency, then you have the possibility to retransmit eventually lost packets, making use of one of the techniques. For example, in the Vivid solution, we are using SRT, which is working perfectly for, for the purpose. And you don't give up in terms of quality because you have a complete PCM coded 24 bits, uh, you know, 40 kilos or even more if you want. And this is really cool and is working great. It's relatively easy to use once you know what you have to do. And therefore, we are very happy and we have several customers all over the world using already the Vivid solution, which is the combination of Vivivaldi routers and direct out products with Ravenna stack inside. I want to leave 10 minutes for the question and answer, so I give you, Andreas, back the control of the whole thing. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Andrea. Thank you. Thank you, Luca. Uh, very, very interesting. Um, and uh, as you can see, um, uh, this is a perfect example on how uh, things Nicholas has uh, presented uh, about our address in a practical uh, environment. Uh, very good. Um, I believe there are certainly quite some questions. Maybe I have I have the very first one to you, Luca. Just um, uh, following up on your presentation, did you did you mention the uh, latencies on the various paths? So what was the what was the latency on this uh, low latency path where you could risk um, a packet loss, and uh, how much latency was added through the I guess RIST protocol? Was not trace, but was SRT. So SRT, the, sorry, yeah. the dry UDP, the straight UDP, we could have had uh, something like 200 millisecond between Milan and uh, and uh, Perugia, considering a reasonable amount of uh, uh, receiving buffer to compensate for the you know the the fact that it's not stable with a decent uh, you know uh, you know uh, decent amount of buffer in order to really lose the packet only because the, the packet has been lost, not because it arrived late, so to say. Mm -hmm. While with the SRT, of course, it's up to you. It's the round trip time is around about uh, 50 uh, milliseconds using uh, uh, FTTH uh, fiber connection. Of course, it's up to you. Usually, I mean, we, we experience the fact that if you are using a, a buffer time with the SRT, which is four times the round trip time, you are quite safe because you can, if you are really unlucky, you can retransmit up to four times the same packets that you have lost. So, <laughs> um, so 200 millisecond. Uh, if the the round trip time is 50, 200 50, 50 by four, 200 millisecond, plus the receiving buffer. I think that the SRT we decided to have in the end uh, must have been something like six, 600 milliseconds, mm. which is anyway live enough for such a kind of performance and transmission. The media set uh, uh, responsible, David Gadia, told me that if they would have used, uh, I don't want to mention other codecs, but if they said if we, we should have used the, what, we, we, what we used so far in the previous years, we would have introduced at least four times the amount of you know latency mm. anyway. So even if we used SRT, we were much faster than the previous solution that they had the previous years. So uh, maybe following up on on on, on securing a protocol transmission, um, Nicolas, you mentioned um, that there are basically three three um, basic ways to secure transmission. One is the uh, well-known 2022-7 stream redundancy which you can find on most, um, at least, um, um, 
uh, high quality uh, Ravenna AS67 devices anyway, because that's the redundancy scheme being used there. So how about uh, FEC and SRT? These are neither, um, you know, described protocols within Ravenna nor AS67 or 2110. How could you, how could you then employ FEC or um, SRT risk uh, protocols uh, into this kind of environment? Yeah, they are not described uh, in Ravenna or A67, but they are used a lot in uh, remote uh, broadcasting or remote audio. Um, and uh, basically, you would use a gateway. So this is this is the this is the Vivivaldi box that uh, Luca was showing. So you have a black box. It is receiving a stream, and it takes care of transmitting the stream to the other end with whatever security you need. You can even mix. I mean. Uh, so FEC can be really complicated and you can have FEC patterns that go way beyond my pay grade, but um, it's, it, it's, it's really a, a, um, a way of securing this. And then if you want to go to go test it yourself, uh, this is what we did last year for the, for, for the, for the webinar when we went to the cloud. Uh, with Derek Tout and Ross, uh, SRT uh, is providing a really nice uh, set of um, applications that then you, you can uh, that you can really test easily and uh, experiment on it. Very good. So, uh, Roland, uh, you've been watching the uh, QA section. Are there any further questions coming in from the audience? Uh, yes, there are. Um, well, actually, we've got one comment, first of all, uh, someone saying that they um, uh, tested the Vivid in Poland. They said it works great. They send 32 tracks from one radio station to their office 20 kilometers away, and it works great on a public network. So there's another nice um, use case. Um, but we do have a question for uh, Luca, who is being called a dark lord here, um, Asking, were there any significant challenges during the setup of the event that were not anticipated? As long as you have a stable internet connection, much better if it's FTTH, so fiber to the host, so you don't have copper in the between, but it's really, you know, relying on a fiber connection. And um, if you have the the pre-programmed uh, VPN router from Vivivaldi, it's literally a plug and play. You just have to power up the device, connect the port number six, the nick number six of the devices to the internet, and then anything else is just a normal Ravenna environment slash Prodigy MP environment. Because okay. literally the fact that everything is managed automatically and seamlessly from, from the Vivivaldi routing, and you don't have to bother with clouds and organization or something. The only thing you have to get familiar with is define which is the rules that Vivaldi understands, which are the standard unicast or multicast flow, because Vivaldi is also handling multicast traffic and via VPN. That's very cool because if you have to transmit to several different locations, you don't have to duplicate the upload bandwidth that you need because you just upload once to the cloud of Vivivaldi and then the multicast is managed by the cloud. And that's really, really cool. By the way, there's just a, an, let's say an, an internal rule that if you are using 239 for your standard UPN, uh, UDP Ravenna stream, Vivivaldi receiver understand that that should be routed towards the VPN cloud for the standard multicast traffic while we use internally decided to use 238 just to filter out that traffic inside of the Vivivaldi and not to be uploading that to the cloud and sending towards the uh, SRT sender. That's the only trick that you have, to, you have to remember when you create something like that. Then Vivivaldi is offering uh, an online tool which can be managed straight from the same Viv Vivivaldi router to manage the connection between the SRT sender and SRT receiver. So from the user point of view, you just create a normal uh, Ravenna uh, stream, you send it to the Vivivaldi and ask Vivivaldi, please use SRT to send it to the other location. <clears throat> to the other location, you ask the Vivivaldi router to decode that SRT or receive that SRT from the cloud and bring back to the local Ravenna device, a standard Ravenna stream. 
So then starting from there, anything else is standard Ravenna application, so stream and stuff like that. The only thing you have to get familiar with is the reference, GPS reference, local PTP grandmaster, and you have to know that you will have a warning every time you subscribe a stream because the warning says, well, wrong PTP master, as Nicola said, because the PT PTP is locally generated, is different from the one which is sent on, on, on the other side, but it's okay because we know that the PTP is exactly the same because it's referenced to the same GPS. But other than that, it's a normal, if you are familiar with the Ravenna infrastructure, then the Ravenna transmission side is over. I mean, it's, it's all there. Then, of course, you, you need to get familiar with the other things that you are playing with, such as the Prodigy MP and Globcon, but this is, this is, is the same with, with any kind of hardware that you, you need to know what to do. But the fact that you can control via Globcon a device, no matter if it's connected and is in the same room or 3,000 kilometers away, it's a big advantage because then you can virtually create your virtual console and then when you are moving a fader it doesn't matter if the console is there or 300 kilometers away as long as you have the control fine okay that's great and uh a, a viewer in um, poland saying for him it just uh, took uh, uh, 20 minutes to set up now i know that um, nicholas you have to go at uh, um, on the, on the dot don't you but i think we've got a couple more questions um but actually i've got one that's aimed at, at luca so um yeah nicholas if you have to drop away um you know thank you very much for yeah, yeah uh, indeed thank you very much nicholas yes thank you um but to carry on uh we've got a question here is uh getting a good uh, gps lock is tough in many environments um, um uh, are there any solutions being offered that, that could present a workaround for ptp lock on the vivaldi network if, if you can't use yeah. uh, gps um Yes, there are several solutions. And of course, it, it all depends on which is the accuracy that you are expecting to have. If you are connecting just a Milan and Perugia, like in the example we did, where you don't really have an interaction from human beings in Milan and in Perugia, and therefore, worst case scenario, you just have a telephone call, which would have been you know, the same with a hybrid connection or hybrid telephone calls or whatever, well, in that case, even if you are not sample accurate, it's not a problem. And therefore, as Nicholas mentioned before, you can rely on an NTP or even on a PTP, which is transmitted using the same VPN infrastructure that you are using for the data. But then, of course, you need to know that the PTP will suffer from a high jitter. And therefore, first, rule number one, do not expect to be able to extract an audio work lock from that because the jitter would be way too much. And therefore, you have to divide the two world. So you leave the, the over IP transmission uh, on, on, their, on their jitter, let's say, especially the, 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 the position which is slave, not the one which is master. But it would be affected also the other way around, because when you don't share exactly the same idea of what the time is now, of course, the jitter is penalizing both the sender and the receiver, because at a certain point, you are both a sender and receiver in a bidirectional mm -hmm. communication. But having said that, with the direct out Ravenna stack, we have very strong filters, PTP filters. So despite the fact that the idea of what the time now is not so stable, the filter is just keeping the overall jitter a little bit you know, less changing frequently. And therefore, you, you could transmit the uh, PTP with uh, the same uh, VPN infrastructure. Having said that, you need to have gear which are able to do sample rate conversions because you will never be able to slave your legacy devices by generating the work lock out of that PTP. So if you really don't have the possibility to have a precise PTP generated by the GPS, you only have the possibility to either use NTP. At that point, I would use NTP both sides, use Jitter, uh, compensation and disconnect the two clock environment, the audio over IP and the two local ones making use of bidirectional sample rate converter. We offer fast sample rate converter in our Prodigy series, which is only adding seven samples, which is negligible compared to the mm -hmm. latency added by yeah. the rest of the transmission. And of course, 
you lose a little bit of quality because of the introduction of the SRC, but way, way much better than having a, a clock which is too jittery because it's based on a on a on a jittery uh, PTP. So there, maybe there I have. A, sorry. Yeah, maybe we have a final question because you you mentioned that uh, uh, a few times. Um, one of your sites had a local uh, Dante audio network, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the question is, uh, wouldn't it be, you know, couldn't you use Dante uh, uh, also for transmitting it over the Vivi Valdi, or what? What would you make you prefer no. the Ravenna network? No, I mean not because you're you're my friend, but but because. <laughs> Because uh, Dante has a strong limitations. So, for example, um, I mean, nothing. I mean, I have nothing against Dante or nothing in favor of Ravenna. But it's a matter of fact that uh, with Dante, you don't have the same amount of, uh, you know, freedom in order to set up things. For example, if you had to play with uh, uh, 400 milliseconds of buffer, you cannot have it on a Dante receiver side. Mm. So forget about it. For example, second PTP version one. Uh, it's very hard to handle and time to leave and stuff like that. So while dealing with the PDP version 2 of the native Ravenna thing. Third, uh, in case you are exceeding your Ravenna uh, receiving buffer in your implementation, you have the possibility to tweak a little bit the, 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 uh, the other parameters, which is the, the original timestamp. And therefore, you have fourth, um, it's much easier to pass a Ravenna stream, a multicast Ravenna stream towards the SRT encoder and ask the, the Ravenna, uh, the, the SRT uh, device to be, uh, sorry, stream to be transmitted on the other hand and get it back. So there are too many advantages in using Ravenna. Actually not advantages, are possibilities which are not even available on, on the other side. I would say in hierarchy of reasons, not enough buffer, receiving buffer, in the Dante side, PTP version two, and SRT, uh, you know, easy to use conversion back and forth. And so, but, but, yeah. multicast, unicast, the possibility to customize every single parameter, even in details such as the IP address of that. So since you have to connect to several things, and last but not least, um, how would you discover the availability of the Dante stream if the VPN is not passing the MDNS or SAP information or something like that? While we can copy and paste an URL of a Ravenna stream, and even if it's not broadcasted, the the the, the discovery method you can you can subscribe any yeah. any of the streams. Yeah. Did I did I mention enough reason why you have to use Ravenna? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was just. Uh... It's surprised, yes, but it all comes down to the to the flexibility, I guess, uh, and the freedom uh, manufacturers using Ravenna have uh, at hand uh, to actually tailor uh, any parameter which which but, is based. But as you could see, but, as you could see in 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 the presentation, it's not a showstopper because if you have to deal with the Dante local things, you just go through a, something like the Prodigy MP, which is making mm -hmm. the conversion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not only the conversion in terms of format, but also in terms of clocking and uh, sample yeah. rate. Right. So you yeah. can have a 96 kilohertz Dante, uh, you know, environment running in position A, going through a Ravenna 48 kilohertz with bidirectional sample rate converted and get back to a 96 kilohertz Dante environment mm -hmm. on position B. No problem at all. That, that's the strength of the Prodigy MP then, of course, uh, that it can uh, seamlessly convert the protocols and also get analog and digital input and outputs. Uh, back and forth. Very good. Uh, Luca, yeah, very, very interesting. I always love those practical experiences and descriptions projects. Um, so thank you for that. Um, yeah. You're welcome. yeah. I, I've just got one uh, question. Uh, obviously, this is the fourth in the series of, uh, you know, four webinars. No more webinars um, for the moment from the Ravenna team. Um, but I just wanted to ask where people can go for more information. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Roland, um, as always, uh, we have um, the uh, websites, uh, in this case, it's um, uh, merging and direct out uh, website as well as the uh, Ravenna uh, network.com uh, website. Um, in the uh, main menu of the Ravenna website, you will find uh, AES 672110 uh, information as well as the very valuable resources section where we provide a lot of white papers and practical um, guides how to set up connections and there's also some stuff on network requirements and also wide area networking um, examples there. 
And um, as you can see, we are in December. <laughs> you might have noted that with our logo, our special um, Christmas season surprise. You can subscribe to our newsletter if you want to be proactively uh, um, uh, get information whenever things happen uh, on the Rhino side of things. And uh, well, that's it for today. So for all of you who joined today, thank you for staying with us. A few more minutes than actually planned. And uh, hope um, you will have a relaxed end of the year despite the uh, well increasing situation around us. And hope to see you, many of you, next year again when we start another series and maybe when physical uh, conventions uh, and exhibitions will uh, start again. So looking forward to that and um, have a good evening or a good day wherever you are and thank you for staying with us. Um, good night or good day. Goodbye.